Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak. I'm out on the Columbia River right now doing a little bit of testing for the new pedal drive system that we've been working on for about the last eight months to adapt to our skin on frame canoes. Now, this is something I've talked about a lot on Instagram, but I really haven't shown it very much on YouTube. So I thought it might be fun just to take you guys on a quick informal adventure today. We're out on the water. I'll show you the different parts of the system and how it works. And then in a couple more weeks, we're gonna be releasing a much more detailed explainer video and also a plan set and a video course for how to adapt this to our skin on frame boats and potentially other boats as well. So why don't we just start out here with a real quick informal speed test. I'm gonna turn on my GoPro back here with the telemetrics. That way you guys can see how fast we're going. And right now I'm barely pedaling. I'm just pedaling at a really relaxed pace, not pushing very hard at all. Now I'm gonna kick it up a little bit more. I would say right about here is about the normal pace that I travel in this boat. You know, I pushed harder, I could go faster, but this is something that I could easily sustain all day long, even though I'm not actually using these boats very often. So, if I was a little bit more in shape and I was doing this once or twice a week, I would say this right here would probably be my normal traveling speed with this particular system. And then if I'm gonna sprint and push flat out, that's about how fast I can push this 14 foot six inch long canoe with a 14 foot water line. And obviously the limiting factor there is hull speed. So that just gives you an idea of the efficiency of this, how fast you could expect it to go. Now I'm gonna turn the camera around to show you the pedal drive itself. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the adapter box that we've developed to fit into the bottom of our skin on frame canoes. And this is completely removable, which means that if you don't want to have any of this stuff in here, you can just unscrew these screws down here and you can put in a plug and then you can use this exactly like a normal canoe. Or if you want to pedal your boat, you can put the whole thing in. And the pedal drive I'm using right now is this Hobie Mirage drive. And this is just an incredible piece of technology. The way this works is you can push these pedals back and forth with your feet and then underneath there's a pair of flippers that flips back and forth like a fish's tail and what makes this system so cool is that it is much lighter weight than any other prop driven system and also those fins can kick up which means that if you hit an underwater obstacle basically you're not going to damage the drive and you're also not going to damage the boat and if you get into really shallow water you can push the pedals like this and just push them slightly back and forth and that creates a little flutter kick, so you're only drawing a few inches of water and you're not gonna actually hit the fence, but you can keep moving forward. So it's a really brilliant little system. It's been surprisingly challenging to design this though. This is something that I thought was gonna take me two months to figure out. And now eight months of full-time work later, I'm finally to the point where I can release a plan set for it. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and put my feet back on this and we'll keep moving here. Now, you can also see off to the side here, you've got this big white thing. And what that is, is the pop-up sail system that we have for all of our skin on frame canoes. And we don't have a lot of wind right now, but why don't I just take a moment to pop that up just to show you how it works. We don't wanna have this pedal drive in the water. We're gonna pull it out. I'm gonna set it off to the side. I've got this funny little device right here, which I call the submarine. And the job of the submarine is to plug this hole. That way we don't have a bunch of water splashing up into the boat. And it also helps to minimize the slot drag from this right here. So it's pretty hard to put the sail up and film it at the same time, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna undo this bungee that holds everything together. This here is the uphaul line that I'm gonna pull on and I gotta make sure that I have my sheet in the other hand. I'm gonna put this in the PFD for a sec. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm gonna grab the top of the mast and I'm gonna flip it up. And that's pretty much all you've gotta do. 
and then I can sheet in the sail over here. And now we are sailing. We're not sailing fast, but we are sailing. And the thing I love about this system is that it's just dead simple. You barely have to do anything to get it up. It's super quick to take it down. It doesn't have a lot of sail area, but that's deliberate because if you're out on an expedition, you really don't want to mess around with putting a lot of sail up in the sky because you don't want to tip over, especially if you're on a crossing. And even having said that, it's important that whenever you're using a sail on a canoe under any conditions, you're using really conservative judgment so you don't get into trouble. So right now we don't have much wind, so we're barely sailing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this back down. I'm gonna reverse that process. Looks like my sheet is caught a little bit on my spare paddle right here. Okay. I'm gonna grab the uphaul line. I'm gonna release it. I'm gonna make sure I throw it forward so it can't catch in the cleat. And then the whole thing comes back down. All right, so now that we've got the sail back down, let's take a moment to play with the electric motor that I brought along with me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out the plug in the bottom here. I'm gonna set it off to the side. And then here I've got a Bixby electric kayak motor. These are not cheap, but they're really well made. And this one has an adapter that will fit into anything that will accept a Hobie drive, which we happen to have right here. So I'm just gonna push this down in here. And then next thing I'm gonna do is put the kill switch on the battery. That way, if I fall out of the canoe, I don't end up losing my boat. And then over here, we've got the controls. So why don't I just fire this thing up and see what it does? I think this has 10 speeds on it. I'm just gonna push it until we're going about three and a half miles per hour, because that's gonna be probably the most efficient speed that's gonna give us the longest battery life. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that, but the motor is just really quietly whirring down in there. Now, I haven't really talked about the rudder yet, so why don't we just reach around here so you can see that. You can see it's just a really simple canoe rudder, just a couple lines coming off of a yoke. They go behind the ribs so they don't catch on anything. And then to steer this whole apparatus, I can use the same rudder that I used for the sailing system. So if you look down here next to me, you can see that right underneath my seat rail, I've got this bar that goes back and forth. And if I push the bar backwards, I turn right. If I pull the bar forwards like this, I turn left. Now, as long as we're motoring along here, I just want to mention that the only big downside to having the motor mounted in the center like this is that if you hit something, it's not going to be able to kick up. So it's just a matter of making sure that you're only using it in deep water. And if you think you might be getting shallow or around submerged objects, you pull it out and switch to a different way to go forward. Also, I should mention that this does have reverse, but I find the reverse function is more work than it's worth. And it's just quicker for me to stop the motor and then grab my spare paddle right here, which is pretty easy to deploy. So it looks like I got a pretty nice boat wake coming up. I'm gonna try to do something I haven't tried before. I'm gonna turn around and see if I can surf this. I might be too late. I'm in the waves right now. Let's see. Oh yeah. Nah, I don't know. I'm not exactly surfing, but I'm getting a little bit of a push. Got a nice little gust of wind right now, so I thought I'd raise the sail up again, do a little bit of sailing. So I think that's pretty much it as far as the basics of how all this works. Once again, I'm gonna have a much more detailed video on it coming out soon, probably with much better audio because we're gonna shoot it inside. So I think for the rest of this video, what I'm gonna do is just show you guys some of the scenery. This is obviously not a wilderness area, but there's some nice boats to look at in the marinas and also some cool industrial stuff if we end up going that far.
I think one of my favorite things about going along the waterfront like this is just seeing all the crazy stuff that people have on their boathouses. It's like we got a salmon, a taxidermied bear, and a water buffalo. Nice little cat boat coming up here on the left. I wonder what this one is exactly. If anybody recognizes this particular cat boat, let me know. I'd like to know about it. 